Oh, hush puppy. Haters are people who read with no resume and critique with no credentials. I like him, not the problem. I tell it to hear what Man, I should've known he would do me dirt. So, Mr. Rebel, I'ma slump through the puddle. Cupid's got a weapon, caught a pot with a devil. Tell him that I'm done, tell him that I'm not here. Hit him with a lamp, I'ma hit him with a cheer. Throw the two sign, I'm done with sun. Slow mo, as the bullets race from the gun. Hi guys, welcome back to That Barb Dre, where we do reviews and opinion pieces on Nicki Minaj, politics, pop culture, and world events. Please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications so you don't miss a single post and enjoy the video. So, ladies and gentlemen, you already know that, uh, uh, you know how we do it. So, we have some cases on the docket. Tonight on the docket, we're going to be talking about... Nicki Minaj's clearly still running the game right now, seeing guys, Barbie World is tracking for a new peak at 9 or 5 on the Billboard Hot 100. Alongside her other more recent releases, like Barbie World, Princess Diana, Pound Town 2, and Endless Fashion, all on the Billboard Hot 100 right now. Okay, next case! Netflix is set to release a female rap documentary that is noticeably lacking Nicki Minaj and other female rappers. Posted an article titled, Nicki Minaj snubbed from Netflix female rappers documentary. Barbs are pissed. But honestly, that couldn't be furthest from the truth. The only thing that I could see on my timeline was Barbs questioning why Nicki Minaj continues to get overlooked on purpose by the music industry. And that's the narrative that they're trying to push. No one really cares about her being included or not. It's about the optics of them purposefully not including Nicki Minaj in the female rap conversation when she is the highest selling female rapper, the most successful female rapper of all time. To give a little backstory, this is a Netflix documentary titled Ladies First, A Story of Women in Hip Hop. The article reads, Netflix is celebrating hip hop's 50th anniversary with a documentary dedicated to all the women of the culture. Well, almost every woman. As fans peeped the trailer and noticed, it excludes Nicki Minaj. And then the article cites random tweets from accounts with large followings like Twitter page, Strong Black Lead, with comments like, we really gotta sit down and talk about why they keep excluding Nicki Minaj from these topics like she isn't the most successful female rapper of all time. They're literally trying to wipe her from the history books due to personal vendettas. And another one reads, Ladies of hip hop, no mention of the queen? Who kept the scene alive for 10 years straight when mainstream wasn't checking for women rappers? Yes, there was female rappers out, but the only girls at the time were Nicki and Iggy who was charting. So the girls did have something to say, but it was just about the principle, not about Nicki being included or some catty shit like that. It's not about that. It's about the disrespect of this black woman in hip-hop in life in general and we're seeing this in 4k who's gonna stand up and say something and who's gonna stand up and do something about it because no one cares until it happens to them it's undeniable what's going on right before our eyes it's also important to note that the likes of Lil Kim Foxy Brown Eve and Lady of Rage just to name a few were not included in this trailer but it has been revealed by Sean Allen via Twitter whom is allegedly behind the Netflix documentary Nikki didn't let us license her music and videos and clearly the barbs show what everyone was thinking. We're not asking if she declined to be in it. We're asking if she was always supposed to be in it. And then he replied, yes, but it didn't make sense because she didn't give us any licensing. Her nor Missy. Okay, so boom, there's your answer. She declined. Next case. Next case. <laughs> that bitch Doja Cat. She's a foul ass bitch. That bitch knew she was doing. That girl knew what she was doing all along. Doja Cat has reportedly lost over 100,000 followers again within one day. She has now lost over 500,000 to 700,000 Instagram followers within three days by fan controversy. Know what happened? Let's see. In a fit of rage, Doja Cat lashed out at fans the other day. She went on meta threads to say, my life, my rules, my style, my attitude. And then a fan replied to her and asked, I want to hear you say, I do love you guys. As usual, you say to your fans. And what was supposed to be a sweet moment turns bitter when Doja Cat replies, I don't though. I don't even know y'all. This response was totally unnecessary and totally uncalled for. It was very left field and not something that I would expect from Doja Cat, knowing that this is probably a child that she's responding to and all the interactions that fans get with their faves is very special and important because it means so much towards the support that they get from them and the people around them. And we don't know you, but we have supported you through thick and thin. Mind you, you'd be nothing without us. And you'd be working at the grocery store making songs from your fucking garage band, Miss High School Dropout. Wake that up, please. Wake that up. <laughs> Ooh, 
Ooh, I can't believe they toasted that bitch up and served that hoe on a platter. Ooh, they ate that, I fear. She then ends the account with this before deactivating her Threads account. Nobody forced you. I don't know why you're talking to me like you're my mother, bitch. You sound like a crazy person. She be getting a little too cozy, a little too fresh with her fans, because who the fuck is she talking to? But anyways, let's get into the response video she made. I love my fans. I love all the people who support me. I love the people who fucking, I wouldn't have this painting in front of me if it wasn't for my fans. I wouldn't have food on my table if it wasn't for my fans. I wouldn't have an, a fucking excess of cheese sticks in my fridge if it wasn't for my fans. I wouldn't have fucking my dog if it wasn't for my fans. I wouldn't have my house if it wasn't for my fans. Well, no, I would have a home, but I wouldn't have this house probably if it wasn't for my fans. Um, but I'm not giving them all the credit because I do work my ass off, so it's like a 50-50 thing. Girl, it don't matter how much motherfucking music that you produce. Because if fans don't go out and buy that shit, you wouldn't have a pot to piss in. I don't like that bullshit. It ain't 50-50 shit. Bitches sit in their motherfucking houses, on the streets, any fucking where, writing in their motherfucking notebooks, raps, singing, writing for other bitches, and they never have a motherfucking career, bitch. It don't matter how talented that you are, it matter about the fans that believe in you. And when you turn your back on them, bitch, you spitting in the face of the bitches that put the dimes in your motherfucking pocket, bitch. You gonna end up like one of them hoes that's on the motherfucking streets. Like them retired-ass athletes with fake-ass jewelry that ain't got shit to their motherfucking name because all they did was squander their entire career. And then Cardi wants to go on her little tirade saying that she hates her fans, but this is all for album rollout. We're not even gonna talk about that bullshit. Anyways, that's all the time that we have for today. Thank you guys so much for making it to the end of this video. Please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Turn on post notifications so you don't miss a single post. And comment below on what you think about the topics in the video. And have an amazing day. Bald ass alien piece of shit. DeAndre, what you doing here?